Adesanya versus Cannoneer. Something about this works, doesn't it, guys? There's something about Cannoneer being completely stoic and being completely quiet that is goddamn intriguing. And the element, and you guys are feeling that. The line has actually gotten closer. It is closer. Adesanya is now a plus 390. But 24 hours ago, he was a plus 420. It's actually getting closer to Cannoneer. Do you want to know what that is? Do you want to know what that element is? It actually has to do with Hollywood more than it has to do with anything that you've ever seen in your time as a mixed martial arts fan. Before Van Dam proved to be the baddest dude in the bar that could beat everybody up, bikers were all in there and rowdy and loud and drinking beer and spilling peanuts, and Van Dam was sitting there quiet. Before Bruce Lee beat up 15 guys on a tape that they sped up with his nunchucks, they were all being loud and obnoxious and making asses of themselves while he was being calm. And I'm not kidding about this. That is where the psychology comes from. There is a part of you that will always favor the stoic calm, the Fedor, the Rachmanov, to use a new name, that approach. But it doesn't have to do with you following Fedor Rachmanov's career. It has to do with martial arts movies that you watched at 2 a.m. on replay when you were a kid. Truly. It truly does. But I feel it too. Not to mention every great upset has some of the elements that I just described, where one guy is completely ignored, but he was completely focused. And we are seeing that Cannoneer is being completely ignored. We're seeing that in the fact that if you go to a Google search, you're not going to see any interviews by Cannoneer, but that's not because people don't want him. That's because he's refusing them. It's a very different approach. And this is Jared's moment. He has every right to do what he feels is absolutely best for him for this moment of which he has earned. That's true. Izzy views it differently. Izzy does not view this as a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. He views this as an obligation and a responsibility, and he's also doing his job as best as he know how. Nobody's wrong here, but just to explain why there's a little part of you as this fight gets closer, that's starting to wonder, hmm, does Cannonier have the power? Can he catch him? He sure is strong. The little part of you that's starting to turn, starting to see a little bit of glimpse, a little bit of pot of gold on that rainbow that is Jared Cannonier. just so you understand, that's where it's coming from. It's an influence that you had from Hollywood. And if you look with inside yourself, you will find that I'm right. And if you try to look outside of yourself and tell me that I'm wrong, I'm quickly going to turn the gun on you and to tell me to provide me an example within your time as a viewer of mixed martial arts, and you're going to be stuck. That's what it is. And Dan Hooker quite possibly said this best. Dan Hooker simply said, this fight is ridiculous. Izzy's going to destroy him. Dan Hooker's going to be the one in the room that looks the most correct when this is done. However, the phenomenon that's leaning towards Jared and is actually moving the line at DraftKings is not without merit. The problem and the exception is when you talk about the great upsets over time, you talk about the elements that are added to this fight and how that steers you, at least by the numbers, towards Cannoneer. The champion, the favorite, the Adesanya always overlooks the opponent. That's one mistake that Izzy is yet to make. Izzy does not overlook opponents. He is not overlooking Jared Cannonier. As a matter of fact, he does have a different approach. Jared Cannonier's is everything, all of it. A lifetime of work into these five rounds. Izzy's is different. He's looking for a different match. He's looking to get a hold of Pierre. He just doesn't know if it's Pierre or Strickland going to advance. He's looking to get a hold of Pierre, and he's looking as this as one of the training aspects and one of the experiences that he's going to have along the way. I understand it from Izzy's standpoint. Many people won't like that. Many people will defer back to telling you, you have to be absolutely focused. I will tell you it's very hard to get psyched up, but boy, it's easy to get psyched out. When you are in training, it's the only time that you want to be absolutely focused. When you get to game day, you want to care less than your opponents. You want to be playful. Very hard to do. 
But an easy way to do that from a psychological standpoint is to be looking past it. I'll tell you when I was wrestling, I had my best round was in the semifinal. You didn't want to run into me in the semifinal. You ran into me in the finals? Boy, I got second a lot of times. I got second in my state. I got second in the nation. I got second in the world championships. There was something about the finals. There was something about the finality. As opposed to a step in the process along the way. A step in the process along the way just favored me. And I only bring that to you because that's how Izzy looks at this. It is not to say that Piera is a harder fight or possibly Sean Strickland is a harder fight or a more meaningful fight than Jared. It's not to say that at all. It's a very interesting mindset. It's a very interesting game that Izzy plays with himself. Believe me, once he gets to Piera or Strickland, he will be using them the same. He will already have somebody else and he will be looking past them. For right now, he has created a semifinal for himself. That beating Jared, that getting the championship, that winning the money is not what this is about. He has created an environment for himself that this is a step in the process to get to what he actually wants. And as soon as he gets this out of it, believe me, he'll play this game again. Nobody's right, nobody's wrong. There's different approaches, there's different mindsets. And if you're a young athlete and you're trying to go through the process, you've got to find which one works best for you. You can't just listen to the coach that you had that tells you you got to be 100% focused. You can't if that's not what doesn't work for you. Getting fully focused, there's something known as paralysis by analysis. If you sit and you study and you focus on something, you'll freeze up. you got to relax. And a great way to do that is to be looking past it, which for some athletes bites them in the ass. But for Adesanya, where we have a history, we have a whole body of work, we can look back, we can look forward to this fight by looking back on other performance that he's had and other approaches to those contests. They're the exact same. I wish Jared the best. I got no horse in this race. But if you want to know the truest statement said, lean it up to promotion for this fight, it was just said yesterday by Dan Hooker when he said this fight is ridiculous. Adesanya will destroy him. 